here today with Sebastian, who designed the aero on the Love Fab Pikes Peak Enviant. So Sebastian, you're ex Formula One, you want to just go into a quick bit of background on yourself? Yeah, so hello, I'm uh, Sebastian Lamour. I'm, uh, as you can guess with my accent, I'm, uh, I'm from uh, France. And uh, so I'm working uh, for the Sauber Formula One team as an aerodynamics uh, concept designer. I've also quite a strong experience uh, uh, in, in Le Mans. I've been involved with, uh, with Pescarolo uh, at Le Mans in the, in the past uh, decade. And uh, so, yeah, and uh, uh, Le Mans experience, Formula One experience. I've always been uh, quite a big fan of, uh, of Pax Peak. And uh, and somehow I wanted to to be to be to be part of uh, of that race, and with a uh, with a love fab team, uh, yeah, uh, I get the opportunity to to be involved. So that's uh, pretty pretty interesting. Okay, so let's let's talk a bit about the car concept. So we'll walk through here. Um, yeah. So so the overall car concept. Can you just talk about like what what your general direction was that you wanted to go with the thing? How you want to balance the the drag versus the downforce and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So the the when you, what, what is interesting when you have Le Mans and Formula One experience, given that now Pike Peak is fully uh, is fully asphalt, you can see that the trend is to go more and more toward uh, cars which looks like uh, sport prototypes actually. But the thing is that Pike Peak is really uh, is, is really uh, specific. So the main idea uh, of the car uh, was to try to, to generate uh, as much downforce as possible because this is all, all you are doing the the lap time in in Pike Peak. In Le Mans, for example, you need to have a really aero-efficient car, so downforce, but uh, also trying to, to reduce as much as possible the, the drag. And in Formula One, it's a bit the same. It, de it depends, of, of course, uh, the tracks, uh, because there is a lot of variety of tracks. But this is, uh, you, on, uh, on, on, on tracks, you always, tr generally, you try to, to, to chase aero-efficiency. In Pax Peak, you, you, you really try to, to chase brutal uh, downforce, if I can say it like that. And uh, and uh, the, the drag is less is, is a bit less important for sure. You don't want to do crazy things because there is there are still some uh, some straight on on Pikes Peak, but you, you really need to, to to maximize the downfall. So you you can see that the the main aero philosophy of the car, uh, especially with those uh, at the front when you when you see those uh, front fenders and the the front splitter, you have some uh, some windlets. So basically, at the front, the most powerful the most powerful tool to generate downforce is a front splitter, which works like a diffuser basically and generate uh, negative pressure uh, at the bottom. We have the windlets as well, which uh, which helps the the diffuser by sucking even more air at the at the trailing edge, as you can see uh, as you can see those windlets. And on top of that, to, to, to maximize even more the, the front downforce, we have tried to, we've tried to work also with a, with a positive pressure or stagnation pressure, as you, as you say it. So that's why you, we have those really uh, aggressive front, uh, front fender. And uh, it's pretty aggressive. Huh? So obviously, you will not do that in Le Mans, for example. But the idea with this really aggressive shape is to generate a lot of positive pressure on top of the of the of the, of the front splitter. And um, yeah, maybe we can go uh, yeah, toward, towards the rear of the car because I'm talking a lot about the front downforce because I will speak about it later. But there is a big challenge in terms of getting the aero balance right. And, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to talk about this rear end because it's, it's it's one of the most interesting rear ends I've seen on a, on unlimited pass cars. Specifically, this whole exposed tire region, um, where the, whereas most cars of this sort of body style, you tend to see a covered tire or you see not enclosed bodywork and you see fully exposed. So, can you talk us through a little bit about what's going on there? Yeah, sure. So it's a again, it's a bit it's a bit linked to what I've said about the the front of the car and in terms of general aero philosophy. So again, because you are you are chasing, uh, you you are trying to maximize the downforce. Uh, it's 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 a, a bit surprising. You, you, people are not used to see uh, front wheel covered and rear wheel and rear wheel open because usually in F1 you have all wheel uncovered and in Le Mans you have all wheel covered. But this is due because of the regulation, and this is why we've tried to 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 
to use the, what, the, the freedom which is offered by PaxPeak and to try to, to do what makes sense uh, independently of what, 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 what people are used to. So at the front we have decided to keep the fender because for, 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 for one reason, because at the front the, the wheel, the front wheel generates a lot of, uh, of, of uh, what we call tire, tire wake. And this is going to, if you don't have a fender at the front, you are going to, to pollute all the rear of the car uh, with, with, those, uh, with, those front wheel, uh, with those front wheel wake. So that's why at the front we've decided to keep the fender to minimize the impact of the tire wake on the rear, but we've designed the fender quite aggressively. We've, we've decided at the beginning we were, we were covering the, the rear wheel, but the, the cover was just basically was just an offset. Uh, around of the of the rear uh, of the rear wheel and with a big opening uh, on top uh, to 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 unload to unload the wheel uh, the wheel passenger because you can see on every uh, covered wheel sport prototype cars you you the problem when you have uh, wheel arches around around the, the tires is that you are you are build, you are building up a pressure inside the inside the wheel arch so that's why you always need to uh, to unload that pressure so you, there is different way to do it some people are using uh, louvers as you can see quite often on, uh, on sport prototype cars the other way to do it is to simply open the fender so at the front you can see that it's done it's done by completely opening the rear of the fender so you can you can effectively unload unload the, the pressure from the, from the rear of the fender and at the rear, at the beginning, we had a big opening to get out as well uh, this, uh, this pressure build-up. But at the end of the day, we, we've decided to get completely rid of that, uh, of that rear cover because it was not really uh, making sense anymore. We are not really concerned uh, at the rear about the, the wheel wake because we are really at the back of the car. can eventually impact a bit uh, the, the outboard side of the rear wheel. But we've decided to, to, to accept that, uh, that compromise. Uh, because on the other hand, uh, to keep the, the rear wheel uncovered, that means we can also, as I was talking about for the front, we can build up pressure uh, in, front, in front of the tire, which help as well to, uh, to maximize the downforce on the, on, on the car. And uh, so talking about uh, rear uh, downforce, uh, so you can see we have the we have the, the rear wheel, which is a quite uh, uh, with a it's a twin element uh, setup, and you can see quite a big uh, main element and a smaller uh, second element. And in CFD we've tried we've tried different position of the of the rear wheel because now. You will see the, the most powerful thing on the car in terms of aero. This is the, the, the diffuser. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the lateral expansion on the diffuser um, in addition to the vertical. Because obviously you've got quite a lot of lateral here, not too much vertical. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, as, as, you, as you can see in terms of uh, diffuser on goal, we are, we are pretty conservative. Huh? We, are, we are running uh, about uh, 8 degrees uh, diffuser on goal, which is uh, quite uh, something which is quite common. The, diffu the, ki the, kick the kick off line of, of the diffuser starts uh, pretty uh, um, early uh, in front of the, of the rear wheels. Uh, yeah, how, how early is that line? You want so basically, I, I, I can show you directly on the side uh, of the car. So you have the you, you have the coolers. Yep. And the kick off line, the kick off line of the diffuser start, starts about in that uh, in that uh, position. So right. Okay. So it's it's directly behind the driver's seat. Exactly. So in front of that, you are completely flat, and behind the, the driver's seat and the cooler installation, uh, it starts it starts to. Start to start to raise up to up to the back of the of the car. To be honest, this is this is a not a, not a topic we have a, we have developed massively in in, in CFD because we I mean we were running with a, with limited resources in a, in a, in CFD and we were trying to invest uh, the time where 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 you can get the most 
the most uh, performance uh, out of every single uh, CFD run. And so the, 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 the idea of the expansion was to try to, to the, the diffuser use uh, all the widths which is available uh, in between the, the rear wheels. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to shout that on the on the camera on top of that you can see that we have uh, the blowing exhaust uh, in the in the diffuser i have so d did you model your your blown exhaust in cfd yes, exactly the and, and what sort of gains are you getting from it alors the gain we we, we get on the on on a, we, we get a 10 percent increase of uh, of downforce T total uh, downforce no, across the car no uh, only only on the diffuser only on the diffuser so that in, in terms of a total downforce on the car this is again which is in between three and five percent uh, right, right. Of, overall on the car but 10 percent specifically on the on on, 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 on the di on the diffuser and, and is that gain rear rear pressure bias like are you mainly getting out of the rear axles yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, this is also a, a reason why, why we have not digged too much into, uh, into uh, for example, you can see there is no, there is no strikes uh, in the, in yeah, the, yeah, yeah, in that the, is in, noticeable in the diffuser. So one of, one of the main reasons we have not digged too much into details uh, and try not to spend too much iteration on optimizing the lateral expansion or some strikes is that because we were thinking there were, there were, uh, and given that we were limited in terms of CFD, we were thinking that there were uh, much, much bigger gains uh, to chase uh, on the car uh, somewhere else. Because uh, straight, so for sure there is uh, clearly uh, more potential that can come from, uh, from, the, from the diffuser. Uh, because it's not, it's not only about lateral expansion, it's also about how, how, how working the rear wing uh, combined with that, uh, with that diffuser and also how, how is working the, the rear end plate uh, combined with the lateral, uh, lateral expansion. Mm. So I have to say that at, at this stage, uh, what, what we have been focused on uh, at the rear in terms of CFD is to, get, is to get the interaction between the rear wing and the diffuser right. That's why we've tried different positions of the rear wing, uh, some higher position, some position which were even uh, lower than that, uh, having actually the, the main element uh, aligned with the with with right. So ba basically making it a full multi-element diffuser essentially. Exactly, and, 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 and in CFD we, we we find out that the best compromise was actually what we call uh, an intermediary position for the for the rear wing, because in because in that position we have a bit we have a bit the best of uh, of everything. We make the we make the rear wing working pretty well with the uh, with the diffuser, which means the rear wing helps uh, suck a lot of air from the from the diffuser. But at the same time, because the rear wing is not too low, not too loud, it keeps uh, bringing. Uh, uh, downforce by its own, because when we've tried to get the, the rear wing, uh, you, you lose a lot of that sort of fresh air potential. Uh, exactly, because yeah. when we tried the rear wing really low, it was increasing much more the diffuser performance, but it was killing the performance of the wing by uh, by itself. So this is the best compromise we've we've uh, we've found out. But for sure, there is uh, maybe for next year. So obviously, you've left a lot of performance still on the table. There's more development here. How many CFD iterations do it take? Or design iterations it take to get to where you are now? Yeah, to, 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 to get to where we are now, it's, we, 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 we've done around uh, 30, uh, 30 iterations oh, yeah. of, 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 of full car, full full car, car CFD, uh, yeah. CFD models. Yeah. And uh, with each of those iterations tested with ride height or just single ride height test? Uh, this, is, this is including uh, some, some uh, aeromap work that, okay, we, so that, that we have done. We've, you, we've tried with, with different uh, so you mapped ride each, heights. So you mapped each of the 30 iterations? or? No, 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 not, uh, no, no. What, oh, what I mean oh, is that, th that includes the 30 includes e there. E exactly, right, right. within the 30 iterations yeah, that yeah. includes the, the aeromap, uh, the aeromap work. And uh, I, I have to say that actually we we get even more uh, the, the package that you have uh, on the car right now is actually not the best uh, package we we found out in CFD. We were limited in resources, so we had we had to uh, to to we were limited a bit in uh, in the in the package we were able to to put into production, but. Uh, 
uh, but for next year we definitely uh, we have definitely the potential to, uh, to to make to make another step on the on, on the aero side yeah super excited for that let's just quickly finish off now the engine bays off with um with a little bit of discussion on the cooling on the car um so i believe that you're running a v-mount setup essentially um you've got is this the intercooler at the top or the Exactly. Yep. So, so, so we are running a, a, v, uh, a V shape installation. So you have the intercooler uh, effectively at the top, and the, the, the water, uh, the water cores, and the oil cores for the for the engine. They are basically they are following that uh, that uh, that inclination uh, behind the behind the body. Of. So it's a V. It's effectively a V, uh, a V like that. Yep. And, and, and then the, the radiators, are they then vented out that small hole out the back? So the main, to, so the, 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 the main package was, was, sink, was sink as one. So I, I will explain what we've tried to do with the, with the general uh, side pod and, uh, and bodywork philosophy. So what, what, what I just said before, you can see that the side pod, the side pod, they are, they are they are pretty loud, and you can see that they, they are going, they are going straight away to the to the trailing edge of the diffuser. And as as I've explained before, there is no gap uh, between the bodywork and the diffuser at the, at the trailing edge. Mm. And the idea of that was really to make the the the, the wall a side pod and the diffuser uh, like a wing somehow and to generate as much uh, ground effect as, uh, as possible. So that's why in that respect, we've tried to make the, the cooler layout really, really compact. So, how many kilos of downforce is this sort of thing making and what sort of ride height are you running it at? So basically, uh, at the average speed in bike speed, which is about uh, 150 uh, km per hour, we will have around uh, 660 kg of downforce. But right. now, if you extrapolate that at 300 uh, km per hour, it, that means that translates into uh, 2,800 uh, kg of downforce, which is really massive. It's more than what uh, current LMP1 and Formula 1 cars uh, have. Uh, and what ride height was that at? I will talk about static ride height. So we are running uh, for the moment at, at about uh, 70 mm uh, front ride height and 90 mm rear uh, ride height, st static. It's been great talking to you, Sebastian. Thanks for taking us through the car um, and best of luck with the race. Yeah, so, thank you. Thank you very much and uh, hope you, you enjoy the, the explanations. And for those interested, uh, Sebastian does consulting through his company, Lemoore.